Cheyenne, how are you? Hello. Hi, how are you? You are the last right. caller of the day. Where are you calling in from? I'm New York. I didn't think I was going to get on the call. <laughs> oh, no, we're losing you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I hear you. Sorry, there's something... I couldn't hear you for a minute. Sorry. I didn't, I didn't think I was going to get on the call. I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. I know. It's like once you get the call, you have to start moving stuff around, turning things off, and getting situated. It's no problem at all. Um... So my situation is uh, kind of weird. Um, I I left my big father, who I didn't realize. Um, we said vows in my grandma, but we never got um, married, like in courthouse. But okay. God let me know that he actually did. Um, he did honor those vows that we took. Um, okay. But I left him in April because it got very very um, abusive. Um, and it was it was very demonic. It led me to deliverance. Um, so I left him. Um, and this month, recently, like last month, this month, I fell into disobedience because I I was very double minded of the fact that he told me to reach out back to him. Um, especially because it's very aware that I'm very aware now that he's in a new relationship and very happy. And we haven't talked even though we had two kids because of how bad it got. Um, I reached out to him and. Uh, I just got a lot of revelation and truth, which was really nice. So it did help me um, in the way of now finally understanding why God had me move on. Um, but And he's going to bless me with a nice car. But the problem is now that the feelings are starting to come back. Um, and I've been through deliverance and I've, tr I've asked for God to break the soul ties and whatever it is. And like I said, he's in a new relationship. But the feelings are just starting to come back, like while I'm trying to do what God told me, which was reconcil reconciliation to, you know, be friends and family. But the feelings are still trying to realive, I guess you can say. Yeah. And, it, and you said the relationship was abusive. Um, it wasn't. It was it was very. Yeah, it was very. Um, it was very toxic. Um, I could see the demons manifest in his face. I, I can I could see them around the house. Um, it was it was just very graphic, but it wasn't like I don't think any of it was very purposeful. Like it was very influenced by, from demonic influences. Okay, I mean, yeah. Could we pray for you? Or it's a tough situation. I, the only advice I could really give you is any interaction or communication we have with someone that we have feelings for is just going to throw gas on the fire. So if you if he's in a new relationship. And you're like, I have feelings for him, but I don't want to have these feelings. And I don't, I don't want these feelings to get increased, obviously. Um, the only way I, I think those feelings are going to increase is if you continue to communicate with him. And you said that you have children together. Is that correct? Yeah. And God, that's why I, that's why I didn't want to reach back out to him. But I was like I said, I, I fell into you're doing it for the kids, um, right? No, I um, I think it was for the kids. I think it also was um, I have a lot of prophetic dreams. Um, and I'm in, I'm in church and they actually, they're the ones who let me know that I was falling into disobedience by not, um, getting back in contact with him. And when I got back in contact with him, God was telling me to warn him because he's in, he's in witchcraft now. Okay. So, so why did they I, want you to get back in contact? Because you have kids together? Because if you're already divorced, why were they encouraging you to, to get in contact with him? They didn't encourage me. They just let me know I was in disobedience. And then when I found out, when I realized, I realized that the disobedience was because he kept showing me signs to reach out to him and I wasn't okay. doing it. And he's involved in witchcraft, you said? Yes. So I don't know if it could be something he's doing. I'm not sure. Um, but I, I don't, I don't think God wants me to have these feelings for him anymore um, because of how bad it got. Yeah. And you've been uh, through deliverance. You've been breaking soul ties and all that type of stuff. Yeah, I do know that I went through I went through deliverance twice twice since I've left him, and it seems like um, perversion has had a strong is is one that is giving a very hard problem to leave, and I think maybe that's why my mind keeps going back to feelings instead of just being reconciled as friendship. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, we'll pray for you. I would definitely say the the thing that comes to mind for me it's a tough situation, obviously, but the thing that comes to mind is the more you communicate outside of you know, having to communicate because the kids, does does he see the kids or do you have like, do you drop them off to he's him? He's in or Georgia. Oh, so he's, he's in, in another Georgia. state. Yeah, but he faced, he, he, um, he FaceTimes them and stuff like that. 
Yeah, I would just say my only recommendation, again, I mean, this is, we could have a long conversation on this because there's a lot of details. I, obviously, I don't know in the situation, but I would say keeping the communication at a minimal because the, the more you talk to him, the more you go down that road and you guys talk outside of you and the kids, like the more you talk on that emotional level, the more these feelings are going to increase. The only way to get rid of these feelings, obviously, we're going to pray God could take them and remove them, but as you is you cutting him off i mean i don't see listen if you if he's abusive you guys have gotten a divorce I, I can't go into all of that um i mean we didn't we didn't we weren't like i said we weren't legally married we okay. said vows we said vows with my grandmother um but um like so you I said, didn't have like a fact, you didn't have like a legal official marriage through the state or anything no um, okay I, so then I, you weren't I, technically no. legally so then you weren't really married you were just considered boyfriend and girlfriend even though you guys said vows that you, you said your grandma's yeah. house Yes, and okay. I and then I realized that God has honored honored those after the fact because of things that He kept showing, like divorce, divorce. Um, uh, why do you think but, God honored them, even if the you guys didn't get have like an official wedding or have like a pastor there? Because my grandma, anything? my grandma is a pastor. I think that's why. Okay. My grandma, yeah. Yeah, I mean it's a tough situation, you know, like. Uh, yeah, I mean, you want it to be recognized by the state for an official marriage. Some people can argue, well, in the eyes of God, it is an official marriage. Some people go to like a tree in the backyard and have a family member pronounce them married. I, I lean more to the side of um, you need to officially get married through the state, have like a marriage certificate, because in the Bible, they had certificates. They had divorce certificates. They had marriage certificates. Uh, like people in the chat are saying common law marriage is not real, a binding by the state. It's not real marriage. It's debatable. We could argue all day. I don't think it matters. I would just mm -hmm. advise if someone came to me and said, hey, I was in an abusive relationship and this, 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 and this, I would tell them I wouldn't communicate with that person. You know, I wouldn't communicate with someone that's abusive and because then you're going to get feelings again. And you don't want feelings again. He's already in a new relationship. He's not a believer. He's practicing witchcraft. You're serving God. You're in church. It's unevenly yoked. This is not a guy you need to be with. And I yeah, would that's highly what recommend. He, that's what God keeps telling me too. Everything you're saying. Wow. Yeah. So I would highly recommend not talking to him. I mean, if these are his kids, it doesn't matter if you're married or not. These are his children. Don't deprive him of seeing his children. But I mean, I'm not trying to be rude. But if I had kids that I wanted to see, I'd be living in the same state as them. I'd be right there in the same town saying, hey, I want uh, visitation. Like, you know what I mean? See, my mom had to like, like the, the relationship got so abusive that my mom basically had to re-kidnap me from his house. He lived in Georgia, so my mom had to drive okay. all the way down there and come get me. Yeah, then yeah, at that point, it's like, I don't know. I would say cut him off, but that's my own, my own. You need to go by your, what the Holy Spirit's telling you, conviction. I just, I don't think an abusive person has any place in your life. I don't think it's God's will, God's plan. Definitely, in my mind. It was drug abuse. It was the drugs, I think, is what changed him that way, honestly. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, drugs will turn you into, into a monster, for sure. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'll definitely pray with you, but I, I, my advice would be cut him off and don't talk with this guy because... He's obviously abusive and this is someone that you don't want raising your kids. Mm -hmm. If he's abuse if he's abusive to you, he's going to be abusive to the kids as well and I would just say stay far away from him. Uh, again, I don't know the details. I don't know why church people are saying like you should reconnect. I would never recommend anybody reconnect with someone abusive like that, but he needs to get his act together first and make, you know, he need he needs to put in the work. He needs to get off the drugs. He needs to get into yeah, church. Yeah, he's off the he drugs. Needs, he's he off needs the to drugs. show you he's changed. Yeah, he's off the drugs, um, and he's kind of like, because like I, he's not, he fell off of Christianity, but he is religious, and he's highly aware. Like I'm aware that in our relationship, it was it was demonic play, and he's like, whatever it is. And I told he was mad at me, and I was because I kept telling him God told me to leave him, especially because of how abusive and he got, um, how abusive it got. Period. And because like I was saying rude, mean stuff too. I'm not even gonna lie. Like I can't just blame him. He was he was physically abusive, but not with hitting. I don't want to get into it. And I was yeah. verbally. Um, and um, after he he even said like when we reconnected, he even said himself like um, he was he felt something break off of him. He was able to feel something break off of him after he stopped doing the drugs after all that. Yeah. Well, you need to say uh, and I'm not trying to be rude, but prove it. You know. Talk, talk is cheap. I, I want to see change in your life, and until I see change in your life, dramatic change, then we're not we're not having a relationship. And of course, the devil would want you to have feelings for him. If this guy's abusive and going to destroy your life, the devil wants you to have feelings for him because that's not God's plan for your life, you know. So, 
Yeah, sorry, let me, let me pray for you, okay? Yeah, I said, I'm sorry, it's my son in the background. Oh, listen, I got four kids. My kids are running up and down the hall, jumping, tackling each other. So I'm the last guy you have to apologize to. It's no problem. Thank you. All right, we're going to pray for you, okay? Thank you. Father, I just pray for Cheyenne right now. Lord, I pray that you would guard her, guide her, and protect her even just from abuse and from this guy. I pray, God, that you would bring him to repentance. You would break his pride. You would just open his eyes to you, Lord. I pray for the, the children or this child, God, that you would just bring protection and love. And God, you'd be the father that's not there. I pray right now, God, that you'd be the father to this child. Be, be a comforter to this woman, Cheyenne, God. Be a love, be a comforter, be the husband that she needs, God. Be the rock that she needs, be the shelter and the refuge. Your word says you draw near to the brokenhearted, so we ask you that you draw near to her, God, and you would just comfort her. You would bless her, you would anoint her, God. Do what only you can do in her life, God. We just pray, Holy Spirit, have your way. Just release your anointing over her right now and just bring peace and rest and joy in the Holy Spirit. Lord, do what only you can do right now. Heal her broken heart. God, I pray if these feelings are not of you, you'd remove them and you would just bless her right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you, really Cheyenne. We're believing it. for you. It'll all work out, okay? Thank you. All right, sister. God bless. Have a good day. Bye.